Oh my god. Oh Jesus Christ. Um that that was that that preview was better than this episode, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, I'm just kidding, but like, oh uh, my god, this episode was uh, was interesting to say the least. They had the right like direction to go with what they wanted to write for the episode, but the way they executed it, in all honesty, was so <clears throat> butchered because I feel it completely. Like, especially when you think about how far Ash is, like when you when you have Ash in this episode and you've seen all the accomplishments he has done to get to this point, especially being in the top 20, supposedly, of like the Pokemon World Championship, you would expect there to be a little bit more higher regards to his uh, to his team and whatnot, or at least just more just at least more well thought out format you know what i mean but like his sir fetch came in of course because of absolute zero it's ass got beat and knocked out uh which again is another big l for bird bird, bird said yo what's up bro it's my time i'm about to dead and then it just dies and then lucario comes in and lucario does his things for a bit and then I was thinking, okay, maybe we'll see, uh, maybe we'll see Lucario do some action. He does. He does a little bit. But I was thinking Mega Evolution could come in and play a role. Even though Ash is not part of it, he still at least wants to showcase his strength, his power. That would have been a cool time to have shown Gary that he is capable of Mega Evolving his Pokemon, bro. Like, that shit would have been awesome there. Like, th th that's just my issue. When you create a character who has all these finisher moves, Ash has Pikachunium Z. Ash has Mega Evolution. Like, these two are quintessential power-up moves that are permanently attached to these characters. That really, when you think, when you start thinking about it, you begin to question, why don't they use that in this? But, like, there was nothing in rules against it. Like, they're, like in straight up, the, the dome guy was like, okay, we're going to be paying attention to you guys. And I'm thinking to myself, like... So anything can go, but it, it just becomes weirder because Ash is in the picture, bro. That, that's just my issue with this episode. Ash is in the picture. They're, listen, they're, you guys can, you guys can totally respect that decision that Ash should be in this episode. But because of the fact that Journeys has gone out of its way to make episodes not have Ash in it, Ash shouldn't be in this episode, bro. Ash should have been, like, at the beginning, told Go what he needs to do and where to go, and let him be on his own for that. Because at this point, with how far this Project Mew thing is, I think they should have, like, let Ash out of the picture to start focusing more on Go by himself. Because when you have a character, once again, when you have a character that is incredibly powerful has been, and this is the fault as well with time too, where you have a character who is incredibly powerful here, who is capable of defeating champions, by the way, uh, and has power-up moves exclusive to him, like with the Pikachunium Z. I would like to think that this should have been something that they had to acknowledge and be like, we can't have this character be in here because he will be seen in this way. At least that's what I'm thinking anyway. I don't know. Maybe you guys think differently. I I, I just see it like that because it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's like chess. The king is not the strongest piece, but it directs the other pieces to attack. Oh, you're mostly talking about the team where I expect Yeah, I'll talk about that too in a minute. Um... The thing is, yeah, when I see Ash and I see all the accomplishments and think about all the accomplishments he has done, and he's not even supposed to really, in a sense, be here because he's not in this whole project to begin with, it really begins to just sort of make the character stick out a lot more. Go forgot to take his introvert meds, KG. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. Uh, I, I don't know. But, okay, 
Ash aside, you know, to me personally, like I said, Ash in this episode had no right to be here. Go, go for the most part, took care of a lot of things on his own. He caught the Pokemon by himself. He, he thought himself to use the Inteleon and Grookey to use it as a way to navigate to, uh, to the cave entrance and work from there. He thought about Caterpie and using the string shot as a way to climb down to get to the bottom floors. Like, Go is capable. We've seen it in the beginning act of this episode. Go is capable more than enough to work on his own terms, especially because he has his own team to work with. He He's caught Pokemon. He's worked with them. You guys keep saying he's bonded with them. Let us see that in motion completely with, with negating Ash out of the picture. That way it would have been, you know, just get Go, Gary, and Tokyo. And we would have seen those three work together. And it would have been an interesting dynamic to have seen that now with Ash out of the picture. Uh, at least that's what I'm thinking anyway. Uh, but yeah, like I said, to me personally, the one weird thing about this episode was simply Ash. And that was it. I really found him to be a character who just doesn't belong in this thing. It's, it's like as if Go partaken in the Pokemon World Championships despite not being a contestant. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's just how I feel personally. Uh, but yeah. I don't know. If I were Go, I wouldn't want to work with Gary who has been an ass to me since meeting him. I mean, that's just how he's, well, to be fair, he also has to acknowledge too, like it doesn't matter about working with him or not. It's about completing the mission. You got to understand that too. Uh, you know, it's a raid battle and Go even admits it like, am I supposed to cooperate? And that was the whole theme of the episode, cooperation, which he failed to, uh, failed to, to acknowledge. He neglected that throughout this fight. So, yeah. He was an ass, but a necessary ass. <laughs> you are right on that. Um, but yeah, so that's just it. Okay, so anyway, moving along from that. Um, the fight in itself, I found it decent. Not good, not great, or horrible per se. Just decent. Although it does, once again, completely... Oh, man. My, my big issue with this cooperation episode, and I'm going to be real with you, I think my big issue with this whole cooperation episode is I feel like it's just not going to be addressed again in some point i mean obviously they'll showcase go's development but like we won't get an episode dedicated to go like working on that to then fully accept and embrace cooperation like i feel they need an additional episode to focus on go learning and understanding the concept in itself of cooperation to then, you know, become more of a player in future Project Mew episodes, however there may, however there may be. Uh, but yeah, um, I don't know. It's just like that part. I really felt weird with the raid battle. I just, uh, he had no problem working with Team Rocket to fight Zap, though. So you are right on that, too. And even when Team Rocket was trying to be assholes to them. And you clearly saw how those three work together, so, which is kind of weird. That Team Rocket, of all people, was the one that cooperated well. So, yeah. And Go was a dick, bro. Go was an absolute asshole. Like, he... I, I'm so happy. I'm so happy all of the characters acknowledged his bullshit, bro. Ash was like, Go, what the fuck? And then Tokyo was like... Uh, no, no, Go was like, I understand that we have to cooperate. And Tokyo was like, no, you don't. I like I love shit like that, bro. They're calling Go out for his bull, bro. That's such a good thing. But it it all depends on if this will be something they'll address in a future episode before we come back to Project Mew. You know, it, it it's something we have to wait and find out. <laughs> Go was in his feelings. Yeah, it it needs an additional one. Whether it'll be sometime in the future or like I don't know. It, it, it's such a weird thing. It's such a weird concept. Do we think Go is going to hit the wall soon? I don't think so. Even before they fought Articuno, Go was being a jerk. And yeah, you saw that, right? He pushed Ash out of the picture. Like, get your ass out of here. And just, like, caught it by himself. Like, Go never does that, does he? Like, Go doesn't say, yo, Ash, get your ass out of here. Pokeball, go. And then catches the Pokemon like that. Has he ever done that? Has he ever just, like, shoved the... <laughs> You know, I wanted him to do that while they were on that cliffside because there's nothing to hold them. So he pushes him 
<laughs> he unintentionally gets Ash to fall off the fucking cliff. Nah, but for real, bro. Like, for real. It, it's such a weird thing. It's such a weird thing to me. Go wasn't himself in this episode. He was, like, even at the beginning of the episode, when he talked about raid battles, even Ash was like, what What do you mean? You, you clearly done a raid battle. You were fine with it. So what's the issue now? Like, you were perfectly okay in the raid battle. <laughs> and Go was like, ah, I guess you're right. All right, you know what? Let's go. <laughs> such a weird thing. Even the episode itself acknowledges that Go was so out of character at some points, bro. Ah, man. I want to fully appreciate this episode because, okay, let me at least bring up something good. Something that should have been, by the way, at the beginning of this series with Project Mew anyway. That was for some reason now being a little bit more acknowledged. There are actually more challengers in this shit, bro. There are actually more characters that are going for this Project Mew Hunt. Something they talked about, but never really seen outside of Gary. Only Gary has been that one character who has been treated under that condition. Everybody else sort of seems to be out of the picture, never on screen. But this episode has them being present, all failing of course, but you, you see that they exist, that they're out there. Um, <clears throat> and I like that. I like that it makes everything feel a little bit more actual, le legitimate, instead of it just being Gary and Go and Tokyo and that's it. Like, there are more trainers out there who are also sharing that same mindset to go for Mew, which I appreciate. But why did it take till now to get to this point? I feel like that should have been something we should have seen in past episodes a little bit, even like, because like seeing this episode, it was a small minor thing, but it adds to the overall scope of what Project Mew is trying to be. It's always about establishing a narrative, the story to make us feel like there is a legitimate purpose behind what we're going through because we, the audience, want to also feel like we're a part of it too. You know, and I, I think that's uh, something they kind of hit or miss with that. So, I don't know. But uh, that, that's just that's just my take on it overall. But uh, let me see. Showing other challenges is to gloss over stupid for our scaling with unsubstantial portal building. Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yeah, so. I don't know, man. I, I legitimately do not know. I... I have no words to describe my full on thoughts on this episode. I mean, Tyrone pretty much said bullshit, but he, I don't. I think we'll probably wait till Monday to hear more on that. And I'm very, very curious to see what he has to say on that, uh, as well as our other buddies like Emmy, who is unfortunately not going to really be present with us today because I think she has some technical hiccups or some shit like that. So, uh, uh, you know, just to not bother her in that way shape or form i think we'll be fine uh so we will see where things will go for this upcoming uh episode which i don't think we're getting one next week as you guys brought up before uh which is kind of unfortunate but like um yeah <laughs> project me without Mew, you right <laughs> and not only they had the recap episode with Mew there what are you talking about there was Mew. hey said hey we're doing the stage tonight um, I will say we probably will not be doing the stage tonight only because uh, we're going to be playing Mario Kart and I want to go straight to that and uh, we'll probably spend more of our time on the Mario Kart shenanigans if anything. Uh, Tokyo music psychic type so I want to catch it to understand Celebi me then start getting get, get started on Project Dabra. <laughs> Holy shit. No, nah, but don't worry, chat. We will we will bring the the things back up again. Unfortunately, these past couple of weeks, especially on Friday, there have been always these like big events and stuff happening to where I have been unable to have the community be here to address their inputs as well, which is unfortunate timing, but uh I do want to say we will eventually come back together to talk more about these uh these episodes soon, but anyway, you know, 
this is really all I got to say on the episode right now. This is what I feel at the moment. Was it good? It was I. <clears throat> it was I. But you cannot deny there are a shit ton of blemishes that really hinder the overall enjoyment that could have been from this episode. Because while it does carry a lot of things that, uh, or a lot of uh, concepts in there that really is good. Like, let me not neglect the Caterpie, the Inteleon, the Grookey. Grookey bitch ass actually had some purpose in this episode, bro. I like that. Like, Grookey, he's not a fighter, but they found a way to implement him into this Project Mew thing proper. Bro, that is such a good thing. I like that. And I liked how his other Pokemon were being utilized. It has to be noted that that shit is good stuff to see and take note of. And to credit where credit is due. Exactly, Rob. So, and, you know, like even the trainers as well. Other challengers existing. Other opponents existing. That is such a good thing, too. I like that. It once again builds the world up while also acknowledging the things that we see. Uh... With that being said, with the positivities, there is more of the cons in my eyes than there are the pros. I really, I really did not, especially because of my reaction as well with the whole uh, Surfetch shit and everything, bro. These past couple of weeks, Surfetch has been getting L's. <laughs> uh, my boy, my boy hasn't been getting nothing but no W's, bro, these past couple of weeks. Hmm. Hoping we get to your TSS take on Monday. You probably will. Don't worry. Uh, T uh, TSS has been uh, taking care of some things behind the scenes. And he's doing fine, though, chat. As you guys have heard him from him before in previous, like, uh, sessions he's been with a part of. He just, of course, just like anybody else, chat. Living his life and doing his shit. And we can all respect that. So, yeah. Uh, but anything else I need to bring up, though? Mm-mm. I ain't got not much more to say. <laughs> I think that's really it. I think that's going to be my input on uh, on this week's episode of PM 2019. I don't really got not much more to say. I feel everybody that wanted to say something kind of had their inputs shared at least through the chat that you see right here or in the Discord one that we showed off a little while ago. Um, so, yeah. Now, with that being said... How about we, uh, hi, I'm in the chat. Yeah, there you are, Adam. Look at you, look at you, you look at you right there with your silly Krogan gear. <laughs> now, with that being said, what do you guys say? We go and, uh, you know, actually have some fun here tonight. Out of, out of PM 2019 now, it was a night episode. But now let's go do something within the community itself and, uh, and play some, play some Mario Kart 8 Deluxio. So I'm going to go and take care of that. Uh, let me just go and disconnect myself here because I just realized it didn't need to be said here. Uh, and uh, we'll be good to go. So, yeah, let's go have some fun, chat. Uh, let me go and open up the game, though, because we're going to be needing that. But thank you, everybody, for tuning in on the on the Pokemon reaction. I hope you guys had a good time with this episode's reaction. And if you did, of course, once again, if you haven't followed us here on this platform, uh, make sure to do so. Follow us here. And if you guys, by any chance, have happened to happen, Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime Gaming or whatever it is that they call it, you can subscribe for free here on this channel to get yourself some sick emotes that you could use throughout this stream and other people's streams as well. And uh, yeah, just help spread the love too. So thank you all for uh, tuning in on that part. But now, let us go and uh, let us go and have some fun with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe chat. I want to go have some fun with the DLC. So let us go and do said thing. Even though I'm not a fan of the anime, I'm always here for KG. Thank you, Lightning. Much appreciated, homie. You and everybody else, bro. You guys are the best. All right. But yeah, let, let's go. Let's go have some fun, chat. No more dilly-dallying. No more silly shenanigans. Let's go have some fun playing Mario Kart 12 or 8, whatever it was. There you go. Mario Kart 8. Let's go. Mario Ready for the fun, KG? I figured out my audio settings cries. Oh, you did? What happened, Emmy? What happened? What was like the was the I'm assuming the uh, the audio was in the wrong settings and it was in the wrong PC settings. I gotta buy the DLC. Oh no! 
Oh, actually, now that I think about it, do you need the DLC to play it? Because... Let me see, hold on, I'm gonna try setting this up right now. <clears throat> Friends, I'm gonna create a room.